Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the re-release of the Diamond Rio tractor in 125 scale from AMT. It's model kit number 719 by round 2. And it's a skill level 3 for advanced builders age 14 and up. And it's a recent re-release from 2011, but it's still available in hobby shops and online. Now, it even includes a miniature kit box that can be displayed with a completed model. It's a nicely detailed kit and was scaled from factory blueprints. The kit contains over 250 parts molded in white, clear, transparent red and amber with chrome parts, vinyl tires and metal axles. Overall the build is straightforward with modular construction and the parts fit well but there's a little flash and mold marks that you'll have to attend to. The directions are done in 12 steps, but it may need to be stretched out a bit to get the thing done right. Take your time, and this results in a nice shelf model, and possibly a show model with a little extra effort. The overall dimensions when done are length 10.5 inches, width 4 inches, and height 5 inches. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful, and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue. But other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Assembly starts with the motor and we can put most of it together prior to painting. So grab these parts. It'll be built in subsections, painted and then assembled. First assemble the block. Add the following parts in place. The rocker arm covers, the breather, the oil filler cap, the water neck filter, front cover, oil pan, oil line, after cooler, intake pipe and dipstick. Paint that unit tan. Assemble the transmission and both air cleaners and paint steel. Assemble the exhaust manifold and the turbo parts and paint those steel as well as also the uh, water manifold is steel. And assemble the upper oil cooler and add the oil cooler and paint this unit black. The alternator is aluminum, the starter belts fan fuel pump um, and uh, fuel line and the fuel filters and Freon compressor are all flat black. To assemble the motor then, add the transmission left side, add the starter, water, manifold, and then the exhaust unit. And then add the oil cooler. And on the right side, add the fuel pump, filters, and line. In the front, add the three belts, the alternator, the fan, and the Freon compressor. Prepare the tires by giving the tread a road-worn look by rolling the tread on a sheet of um, flat 220 grit sandpaper. Just press and roll the tread to scuff it up. And all the tires are the same, so location isn't important. Get the wheels out now, and note that the front and rear rims are different. Make sure to use the proper parts for assembly. The wheel inner spokes are either body color or an alternate uh, ac accent color. So the inner and the outer wheel flanges are aluminum or steel, or can be a, a solid color to match the spokes. I did a custom blue steel monotone rim combination. The rear brake drums are chassis color or flat black and assemble the front rims, rims by uh, attaching a wheel flange front and back to the spokes. Now assemble the rear rims by attaching a front and rear wheel flange to the spoke. Then add the brake drum and the hub cover. And note that the instructions recommend full assembly of the chassis next uh, prior to painting, uh, but, but uh, this involves some steps, so we're going to assemble all the chassis uh, that is painted in these next steps, and then paint the finished final chassis, uh, and finally adding the remaining parts. Grab these parts to assemble the main chassis rails. Start on one frame rail side, and add the engine mount, the rear tranny support, and the cross member. Assemble and add the intermediate cross member, then add the rear cross member, then add the other frame rail. Install the front and rear cab mounts and the leaf springs. Make sure everything stays pretty straight.
These are the parts that we'll need to assemble the rear suspension. Assemble the axles, adding the backing plates and the six air chambers with the two brake chambers on the rear. Then add the gearbox, assemble the springs and the cross tube to the frame, add the axles with the drive shaft and the track bar, and then add the anti-skid controls into the frame and add the license frame and tail light bezels. Pull the parts out of the kit to complete the front suspension at this time. Attach the tie rod to the axle, insert the axle pin into the pin retainer and glue that to the cap. Attach that unit to the axle. Then install the axle. Add the steering box, pitment arm and the power steering cylinder. Then add the idler arm and shocks. Grab the parts for the fuel tank supports. Assemble the battery boxes and add those along with the air tanks and add the slide plate and the carriage and then this can now be painted in the color of your choice for your chassis unit as a whole. Get these parts out for the back end and we'll add the rear tires with their metal axle and add the front tires then by sliding them on the, the pins and glue the tail lights and the uh, license plate tag light into place. Then add the motor and the drive shaft into place on the frame. Now pull these parts out to finish up the chassis and uh, paint those your chassis color. Then the following parts are flat black. The fifth wheel, the flaps, hoses and the assembled radiator. The fuel tanks and the fenders and the hose tenna are body color. And assemble the radiator and install it onto the frame. Add the lower and upper hoses to the motor and then add the mud flaps and the fifth wheel to the rear of the frame. The straps on the fuel tank are are foiled um, and that's where you use uh, some what what's called metal foil. It's almost like tape. You you cut off a piece uh, and stick it on to the area you want to highlight and then you trim off the extra with a sharp hobby knife. Or, or you could paint them silver with uh, a sharpie or a, a fine brush. And then the tanks are installed. Add the steps and the filler caps to the tanks. Add the steps to the battery boxes and then install the fenders and the hose tenna. The chassis is completed at this time with all the wheels in place and from this top view and from the underside view you can see that it's going to be a nice base for your model. This view will give you a little bit uh, better uh, you know, look at the uh, rear and, and then of course the front suspensions installed up to this point. Get the pieces out to begin work on the dashboard with the steering wheel. The instrument panel is a separate unit that makes detailing easily. Unfortunately, there's no decals in the kit for the build. Um, I made my own using an inkjet printer and an image off of the internet for some wood paneling and then uh, painted the whole dash tan and I added the decals for the instruments that I found pictures of on the internet too. And you can get them uh, just about anywhere then uh, assemble the, um, then paint the dash wheel and the column tan also. Uh, the indicator stalks are black and then attach the steering wheel to the column and the column will be attached to the dash. Now get the parts out for the uh, interior. We'll assemble that next and paint the tub flat black on the uh, outside and the door panel and the back side is tan with a flat black floor. The details are done in silver paint and add the heater to the inside of the firewall and paint that flat black with the outside being body color. Now assemble the passenger and the driver seats and paint them flat black. The pedals are black and the shift knob is black with a flat black boot. Install the pedals and the shifter, add the seats in the firewall and then add the dash. We can begin body assembly at this point so get these parts and add the lower body panels to the cab, assemble them and then add the AC unit to the roof. Look for flash and address that with a knife and sand sticks if needed and add the fenders to the hood. If you use the uh, sleeper section, get these parts out, assemble the sides with the back and the front onto the bottom, add the cab mounts, then add the crawl through and leave the roof off for later assembly. To preserve the features, I used a, a wet scrubby pad um, that you can buy in the grocery store to break the surface gloss on these parts because sanding them loses uh, a lot of the molded in detail. So I just scrubbed the parts and rinsed them clean and when completely dry I used a good primer and 
completely prime the inside and the outside of all the body parts. Once your primer has cured, wet scrub the parts again and rinse clean, let it air dry, and then paint the interior of the cab tan and the interior of the sleeper tan. Then the exteriors are all body color on all the parts. Once the exterior paint has cured, you can then add your decals to the body. And I like to start with the large thin ones, especially large long stripes like this. Uh, use plenty of water, uh, let the um, decals start to float off, and then apply them. And I would recommend using some setting solution to help them uh, fit contours and stick better. After that's done and the decals have dried overnight, give the body a clear coat to seal them into place. I get out the window unit and as a tip I like to dip mine into some pledge floor care finish and then let the excess wick off and dry and it gives it a clean crisp look. Now turn the cab over to install the glass using some white glue or some model part cement that's made for clear glass. And Paint the uh, upper console there tan and install it and then next install the interior tub into the cab. Gather the parts for the uh, horns and the related chrome parts and pieces for the cab. Use that white glue to add the running lights and lenses and then add the door handles to the doors. Assemble the mirrors and add the mirrors. Add the screen to the AC unit. Assemble the air filter. Uh, paint that black and install it. And then paint the Luberfiner bracket silver and assemble the Luberfiner uh, adding it to the bracket and to the cab. Then paint the air tube flat black and the exhaust tube aluminum. Assemble the stack and standoff brackets and paint that with some chrome paint. Then install the exhaust tube into place, add the cab into place, and install the stack and add the air tube. Then paint the steering linkage flat black and install it. With those pieces added, the uh, motor is complete and you can see how it looks in the engine bay. These parts will be used to finish up the front assembly. Black wash the grill with a 50-50 wash of flat black and thinner and paint the emblem red on all three of the emblems. The blinkers are stoplight red on the back and turn signal yellow on the front. The fender flaps and the hood hinges are flat black. On the grill, add the hood hinges and install the grill into the hood. Add the fender flares. Then add the blinkers and the emblems and add the fender flaps. And using some white glue, install the headlights and add those to the hood. Then install the hood to the frame and install the bumper and add the plate. Again, using some white glue, get the glass out for the inside of the sleeper and install those and then glue the roof into place and install the sleeper onto the frame. That does it for construction. All you should have left are some decals and some of the red and yellow lenses. And once you assemble and glue the boxes into place, the batteries are inside and they'll never be seen so I didn't include them. The boxes themselves are used, uh, just not the batteries inside. Well there you have it. This great looking kit is a blast from the past. It's been around since the 70s and Round 2 has done a good job of keeping the molds clean. It comes with some small flash and mold lines but nothing you can't fix. The chassis was straight, had no issues building up the part or fitting the parts and the location points were pretty easy to find. The motor built up easily and it's pretty nicely detailed. Uh, but fitting it into the chassis is a little tricky so you'll have to take your time there. Um, the interior is simplistic and uh, almost really nothing uh, in the way of details but then again the real ones didn't either so the sleeper has, has no interior details and the cab isn't a perfect fit um, as the older molds never were but uh, you can take your time and uh, it looks pretty good. Um, this is quite the norm for the old kits and overall the assembly is easy uh, for a builder that's experienced but I wouldn't give this to a younger uh, modeler and the chrome work however uh, just like in the old days uh, have sprue marks and sprue tabs that are thick and they'll have to be touched up um, I think that it's a great idea that round two has really re-released these kits for uh, us 
big rig fans and I think that you're going to love this one so get one while you can and put one on your shelf. We hope you like this premium quality step by step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel which you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks.